Hi, so um, I'm talking about a project that a uh, number of interns worked with me and uh, Rob Mullins at the Computer Lab at uh, Cambridge on this summer, which is to create a programming game which uses, well, to, in order to teach children how to program Python. Uh, so I was going to talk through what our aims are, how far we've got, and then um, how you can help me either as uh, developers or educators or just people with uh, good ideas about how you might go about this. Uh, so as just a little bit about uh, my background, so I'm not a, uh, so I'm a researcher computer lab, but I research compilers and novel architectures and things. I'm not a, a, a researcher in terms of computer science education. This is kind of a, a, a hobby that's grown out of my involvement with uh, Raspberry Pi. So one of our main aims for uh, PyLand was that it's, well, first of all, it will run well on a Raspberry Pi, and it aims to... Uh, um, so it aims to provide you with the, the ability to program the main characters. So this is a screenshot. I will uh, attempt a live demo shortly, which will uh, be interesting. And uh, so it works in terms of you have a series of challenges. Each challenge you must uh, perform or solve some puzzle in order to get the treasure. My initial name was Treasure Pylon, so on the uh, on the basis that it was a name that was so bad it was good. But apparently I've overused that uh, excuse too frequently. So just just Pyland. And uh, uh, so each of these characters here we have uh, two playable characters, uh, Ben and Milo, which you can switch between. So Milo the monkey and Ben the explorer. This is a non playable character up here who you can talk to and will give you your quest. And each of these, you, as you select them, you can hit a button to open up a text editor and control their scripts, as well as um, obviously using your keyboard um, to move them around. And we ended up with some really nice. 2D art, um, tile based artwork. Uh, we commissioned an artist during the project and had a really good relationship where every week we commissioned some more tiles and they'd send and we'd integrate the ones from the previous week. Um, and of course, these are the names of the summer interns who worked with us over summer to actually implement it. Oops, it's wrong. There we go. Now, the, I mean, one of the main motivations was that uh, there's a, this kind of gap between children who, I mean, quite a lot of children, they will start with scratch at their uh, at primary school or even sometimes beginning of secondary school. And scratch is great because it's visual, you get instant feedback, you can make uh, interactive stories and games, and then you want to move to Python. And although things like Python Turtle help somewhat, it can sometimes feel like you're taking a step backwards because to do the equivalent things that you were doing in Scratch, you actually need to be quite advanced in order to rewrite those in Pygame. And so we're trying to produce something which gives you something a something which is visually appealing and uh, interactive in a way that, and engaging in a way that maybe when you're getting started it's more difficult to get those feelings. Uh, another aim for us is that as you use programming in the game, it's a part of the gameplay and that it's motivated, there's a reason that you'd want to do it. I think a trap that you can is quite easy to fall into is that you start setting challenges and say, write code to do this, but then there's not a good reason why you'd want to do that. Um, you know, some, some approaches you kind of arbitrarily make it so that you can't use keyboard control, so you tell people to write code to move up three times and then left three times and then down six times. And it would, you, you could just do that by hitting up, left, and down on the keyboard, but far more quickly. So we want to make it so that writing code isn't a chore. You, it's obvious that you write code to improve the, um, the gameplay but, and to unlock more potential from the game. So this, where we actually are is uh, this is a... This was a this was a ten week intern project. Uh, so we have three first year undergraduates and one who's at the, her final year. And so he ended up doing well. I said software developer. So we did the first ninety percent, and then the, the second ninety percent is still to go. In that we've got it so that the the game engine is uh, actually in pretty good shape now. The major issues there are sorted out. There's uh, it's running super smooth on the Raspberry Pi. We've got an OpenGL ES based render on the Pi. Uh, it gives you sort of forty to sixty frames per second constantly. We have three sample challenges to. 
And these work a bit more to kind of show you what's possible in the engine. I'll talk a bit more about how we're trying to make a better, more complete set of challenges. It's not quite in a state where it's ready for testing in um, as in giving it to students or either students at home or uh, students in, in classrooms and code clubs and the like. But hopefully um, I'll be able to pull something together in the next few months. Uh, in terms of actually what's what's possible, you have uh, your character moving around. Uh, we have multiple characters. The scripts of the characters will run concurrently. So um, there's some potential there for doing uh, something innovative with uh, the challenges that you set, and that these could involve uh, interaction between multiple characters who you control. And this is also a good way of giving motivation for programming. In that, even if you are happy with the manual control, you physically can't control multiple characters at once. So there may be some tasks which you require multiple characters to actually solve. And to do demo time, well, let's uh, get rid of that, do that, and ta-da, ta -da. So it's yeah, not fantastic of its resolution, unfortunately. So this is so this also demonstrates one of the major to-dos, which is to integrate the text editor into the game. I uh, co-discover an example of uh, integrating a well, showing an SDL2 window inside a Qt Qt-based Qt applications with the idea that you'd have a Qscintilla based text editor for anyone who's Qt developers, and that was fine. The interns didn't have time to integrate it, unfortunately, but that's one of the next major tasks. So as you can see, we have our nice little animations, our little fellow, who's called Ben currently, will uh, walk around. This is one of our uh, non-playable characters who's asking you to uh, cut, down the, cut down the vines for him. And I have a script uh, kind of pre-written because I don't trust myself to write any code in front of an audience. And yeah, so, so the problem here is that as you, as you cut the vines down, after a certain time they start to regrow with some randomness. So you actually need to do some work in terms of of, uh, so you're, you're working with loops. You need to do a bit of work in terms of uh, opt, in terms of changing the bounds of those loops so that you clear certain areas before you move on to the next area. So if I hit, uh, so this is our script here. So we have a, a for loop, uh, well, two nested. Uh, let me just move that a little bit. We have two nested uh, for loops, and we it will continuously move east and south and west and so on. And in this case, it's set up so that because of the character is holding an appropriate tool, um, it will cut, cut them down as you move over. So if I hit run, then our little fellow happily moves along. And we, because the, this is obviously a little bit tedious, we also have the turbo mode, so that once you write your scripts to do a more tedious action, and then if you hold down shift, then your more tedious action starts becoming rather better. Uh, oh, and uh, we also have, let's see if I go to the right level, which is not that one, but... Yep, see, there are three levels, so I have to get it right on the third try, which must be... There we go. So we also have nice things where we have uh, little crocodiles that you have to try and avoid. There's actually a, uh, this one we have. The, this is the one we have the playable monkey who uh, you get to come along and cut the vine down so he can get out and help you out. There's actually a fair few art assets we didn't get time to integrate. So there's lots of potential for doing a whole bunch of new things. And so if I let's move back to the. So that gives you a basic rundown of what the game is like currently. Uh, Oh, and this is just a, a quick. This is how we the, the initial prototype before we managed to I managed to find the artist there for us. We got a bunch of uh, simple assets from Open Game Art, so I think we've managed to make it rather more appealing and engaging. Through uh, well, we're very lucky to find this artist basically who did, did a very good job for us. Uh, in terms of implementation, we've got a so the uh, your Python scripts that the user writes are written using Python three. They run in multiple threads, and when you make a API calls, they end up pushing an event onto the event queue. So the event queue has multiple writers, and uh, with a obviously thread safe addition to that, and then the uh, you have a, a single thread which will read off that event queue and actually perform the action for you. 
The game engine itself is implemented mostly in C++. We use SDL2 and uh, it should run on as OpenGL for the back end for the desktop and OpenGL ES on the Pi. There's obviously a trivial amount of OpenGL code. Um, it, it open gel code in there, um, but it's it, for something like the Pi, doing all the blitting by CPU is uh, going to make a substandard experience, whereas we get a nice smooth 30 to 60 frames per second with this. Um, yes, so in terms of creating the maps, uh, the, the fact that the so the challenges themselves, unfortunately, currently require a little bit of C++ coding to implement, which is um, one of the next things on the list of things to, to sort out, because for making it so that you, you can write those challenges in, in Python would both open up the potential community of contributors, but also I think it would be a really great way for uh, to open it up to educators who are using it so they can create challenges for their own students, or a really good activity for uh, children who are playing it in that they can uh, use the Python they've learned to create new challenges or new levels for their friends to play. Um, so, in terms, so in terms of creating maps, um, we use the Tiled Map Editor, which is quite popular in the game development community and actually runs itself very nicely on the Pi, so there's good potential there for, it, it, for you know, the whole level creation system to be, uh, to be ported over. So in terms of what's next, uh, so I had a really great chat with a number of teachers yesterday at the PyCon uh, education track about uh, working with the, well, coming up with a, a set of challenges which lead children step by step through actually learning, learning Python. Uh, in that we had a very... Uh, well, uh, so the challenges we have, they kind of show off the game engine a little bit more than they are. In, they show what's possible, but they're not necessarily the, the way you would introduce children to programming. In particular, I think, well, as, as experienced uh, developers, so particularly the uh, you know, undergrad interns, interns that we have, it, it's very hard to put yourself back into the mindset of somebody who doesn't understand programming, who doesn't understand the basic syntax yet. And from the discussions yesterday, it became very clear that you want to think of something simple and then and simplify it several times further in order to make that initial step so that you don't get people who, uh, who fail to get over that hurdle. The integrated text editor I mentioned earlier will make a big difference to uh, usability on the Pi. Um, Multi-platform support, there's no reason it shouldn't work on Linux, OS X, uh, Windows even. Uh, better error, error message feedback. If people have no of projects to pass Python error messages and turn them into uh, user uh, user understandable or you know, kid understandable warnings, um, that's be particularly useful. I know that there's, there are some very good tools for this in the JavaScript community, like the Khan Academy uh, online code editor, for instance, that has, gives you very nice little errors where a little green blob comes up and says, "Oh, it looks like you might have used a capital letter here," and it will do um, well if you have. If you it'll try and detect typos for you, it'll do edit distance between what you typed and variables and functions defined in the in the scope of the program. So there's massive potential for trying to help people deal with errors there. And in the future, um, this uh, possibility of making your own Python levels and also um, making it so that you can collaborate over a network and that programming is often a very uh, singular task and it would be nice if you could have well, challenges where perhaps the whole class could work together to try and solve a problem and they each contribute to that in some way. And so, given that list of challenges, the question that is on you know, the tip of all your tongues is how can I help? How can I get started with this? So, if you're lucky enough to work for an employer who's interested in um, sponsoring uh, projects such as this or projects to help children learn to program, um, well, that is a, a very, cl a very um, clear way to help in terms of a relatively small amount in order to get more assets as we get more um, level I levels coming out through the community development or larger amounts to do another summer of internships or um, contract development work and the like. If, if you're a coder, particularly at the moment, uh, who's comfortable with C++, um, then there's plenty to do in terms of cleaning up what we have and uh, making it so that the C++ internals are exposed to Python developers who want to create levels. And this issue of the challenge design is totally open to anybody who knows anything about programming. In fact, if you're a total newbie to Python programming, 
programming, you're probably much better suited to it in that you can remember exactly what it was like and what tripped you up. And so thinking of thinking through ideas about how to introduce those things is very useful. Uh, in a few months' time, hopefully, we'll have something approximating a base set of tutorials. And a number of people give me their details yesterday and other times I've talked about it to try out the set of children. If you're interested in that, then uh, get in touch with me uh, either after this or my contact details at the end. And indeed, if you have any advice or ideas about how best to move this forward, then please uh, let me know. And I'll be, I'll be here. Uh, I've been mostly um, busy with the education track, but I'll be here all day tomorrow and maybe some other day on Sunday, on Monday, and of course for dinner this evening, so come and find me then. So, yes, all the details about the project, so getting in touch with the project are up there, and if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. really a question but this is a really nice project uh, if you want funding then you might want to approach the PSF mm -hmm. for funding and also if you want to do uh, get funding for the for the summer interns you might want to approach Google with the Google Summer of Code project yes yes GSOC I think would be a good, good way yes. I think it's an amazing project, Alex, I really do. Um, if there's any help that you need in terms of getting it out into schools, I'm yeah. more than happy to help there. Have you actually tried it out with children? Um, so we've had a, uh, so a number of the children who visited um, High Towers for Young New Wide States acted as uh, uh, test subjects for some early versions. Though it's, um, it, it's happened, we need, it, I mean, there are enough issues that we know need to be sorted before we have a proper trial of children. But that's definitely need. We the only thing step is to do our best effort with uh, what we know in terms of improving the tutorials and then try it out with children and see what happens. Do another round there. Well, that. Ooh, there you go. Uh, are, there, oh, are, there, are there plans to include this with the uh, Raspbian image in, in the same vein as things like Sonic Pi and stuff like that? Absolutely. So, um, so Sonic Pi started out started out at, at uh, Cambridge as a project over a few months, and then um, you know much more effort went into it over time. And we hope that Pyland will grow in the same way. And I maintain the Raspbian SD card image, so I kind of well, once it's stable, I um, yeah may have a thing or two to do with uh, sticking it on there. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you.